Hey you guys, this is Josh with Homesteading Family and today we are going to be talking chicken tractors. Not so much how to build them, but what they are and how to help you figure out what you need for a chicken tractor. Okay, so we're gonna get into tr chicken tractors, but first I wanna cover a few really basics for those of you that don't know a whole lot about chicken tractoring. And this is one style right here that I created, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a little bit. But um, first, let's just cover a couple basics. And one is just, what is a chicken tractor? And um, essentially a chicken tractor is just a mobile chicken coop that you can use to basically free range your chickens within a confined environment. And I think we've got one right here that's wanting to get in. <laughs> She's got a lot to say. Um, so yeah, it's just a confined chicken coop that is movable. Now, why would you want a chicken tractor? And there are a whole lot of reasons. Um, some of the earliest uses of them were for growing meat chickens, which we're gonna primarily be talking about chicken tractors today for raising meat chickens. And that's where it came about, was looking for a sustainable way to raise those meat chickens and get them moving about on, out on the ground instead of co confined spaces. But you can use these for raising meat chickens, for raising your egg layers. Uh, people will use them for other birds and even rabbits for getting them out and about on the land instead of being in a static position. So what a chicken tractor is going to allow you to do is get out of the coop that's always in one place and allow you to take your chickens and move them around your property or even your yard. They come really small. This is one of the larger ones, um, but they come really small just to house a few chickens even for a suburban yard so that you can get those chickens out of confinement, being in just one yard all the time, into a place that is secure and protected, yet it can be moved around so those chickens are always getting new ground. And, um, you know, chickens are made to get out and wander around and scratch and peck. And so when we can have them on grass you know, or in natural areas and move them around without tearing up our own yard or property, um, that's going to save you a little bit on feed costs. It's going to increase the health of the chicken. It is going to uh, spread manure around your, you can, where your garden's going to be or even where your lawn is in the grass while they're getting to eat some of the grass and find bugs. That's spreading that manure so that you don't have to have that all piled up and really just, say, wrecking one area of your property. All right, so if you are thinking about um, using tr chicken tractors, the first thing, one of the first things that are gonna come to mind is what kind. And if you do a Google search or you get on to Pinterest or wherever it is you like to go to find information, you're gonna find there are about as many chicken tractors as there are people. There's just all kinds of ways to do it. And it's really comes down to what are your needs, um, what's your budget and what's your resources. And um, so there are some basics that we'll talk about that basically every chicken tractor needs to have. And I'm coming at this again, primarily from raising meat chickens for this talk today, but a lot of people use them for egg layers and there's a couple other needs with the egg layers. Um, but these basic things are gonna cover you, you know, what, whatever your needs are so that you can go and pick a design that works best for you. I'll talk about this design, but this may be really large for you. It may not be the right fit. So when we get done here, you're gonna have a good enough understanding to go find a design so that you can either buy one or you can um, have a good idea how to build one with your own resources that suits your needs. Because there is no one chicken tractor that's just perfect for you or that's just that's just perfect for everybody. Um, there's different, different um, different designs, different situations that will meet your needs best. Okay, so what are some of the basics? Well, first of all, it needs to be movable, right? This is made to move around uh, the yard 
or the landscape. And so it's gotta be movable, it's not fixed to the ground, which means you're either gonna have skids on it, and we'll talk about that in a minute, or wheels on it. That also means that the bottom is open. We want the chickens to have direct access to the ground so there is no floor, there is no wire netting or anything like that. Um, the sides just go down to the ground and the bottom's completely open. So that's number one. Two, it's gotta provide basic shelter. It's gotta protect your chickens from rain, from sun and heat, and from wind. So that they have their basic protection needs met as well as predators. Next, you need to be able to keep the chickens in. Either you don't want them getting out to where they're exposed to predators, or for a lot of you, you may be doing this in a yard or a small piece of property and you don't want the chickens getting into your garden or into your flowers or off somewhere, but yet you still wanna move them around. So you've gotta be able to contain those chickens. All right, uh, we talked about it being movable. It also needs to be durable. You want it to hold up over time. I don't want a lot of maintenance on these. And so it's low maintenance yet durable. And also if you have, if you're using it for egg layers, there needs to be a good place for those chickens to roost at night and lay their eggs. And one more, they need to have enough space. It needs to be big enough to give your chickens room to move around. So they're confined and you're gonna move them every day and sometimes even twice a day for some people, but they still need to have enough space within that structure to move around. For your layers, that's at least four square feet per chicken. Um, for your meat chickens, it's usually around two square feet. Uh, commercial producers, sometimes it's a little bit less than that, but I found that two square feet uh, seems to work good. It, gives the, it makes them not too cramped, gives them enough room to move around in there for the few weeks that those meat birds spend inside the structure. Okay, so those are some of the elements that no matter what style of chicken tractor you're, you're gonna build or that you're gonna use, you need to cover all of those bases, depending on whether you're an egg layer or meat raising chickens. The one that I have in the background here is what I call an Idaho A-frame, and it is for meat laying chickens. Our egg layers pretty much free range, and they have a coop for staying safe at at night, at night and laying their eggs. And when you get down to um, a chicken tractor for meat chickens, some of the basics are pretty similar. And they're usually somewhere around 10 by 12 foot in size. They can be a little bit smaller, but if you're trying to raise enough chickens for yourself, um, they're gonna be approximately that range in size. And that is to hold 50 to 60 chickens. That meets our about two square foot per chicken rule. This one is 10 by 12. And I originally started with the Joel Salatin chicken tractor, and that is just that 10 by 12 structure, and it's about two foot high. And that's a great structure. It works really, really well, except for that you can't walk into it. So one of my requirements for ease of use after playing with this over a few years is I wanted to be able to walk into the chicken tractor to deal with animals that are injured, sick, need help, and, um, whatever maintenance I need to do, and also for harvesting chickens when that time comes. It's a lot easier to get in there and get those chickens when you can walk in. Another benefit to the walk-in is it's easily convertible to a laying coop where you can add in some roosts and some egg laying boxes if you want to. So it, it becomes a little more dual purpose. Um, so besides that Joel Salatin style, when you get into the walk-in coops, there's, there's a few different styles. Most of them are built either from uh, PVC pipe uh, or uh, metal, uh, metal fencing type structure, sometimes of wood. And uh, those are great, they're very light, and then they're often covered with a tarp. And that is kind of the, that's the main style that you'll see, kind of an arced chicken tractor. Uh, built out of PVC with a tarp over it. Um, if somebody's spending a little more money, they're gonna build it out of metal and uh, tarp it. And those are great for a lot of scenarios. Um, for me, they didn't meet a couple of my criteria. One, uh, those tarps wear out real quick and they get torn up and I'm gonna have to replace them every year or every couple years. Um, two, they, if you want them to last longer, you've gotta take them down every year. And so there's a bit more maintenance going on with those. The wind is rough on them. And so I wanted a structure 
that I could get in and out of very easily, but that was very durable. I could park it in the winter when I'm done and it could actually hold up to some snow load because we're here in North Idaho, the tarps aren't gonna do that. And so this is where we came up with this A-frame style. And if you take, if you look at chicken tractors and you go find the Joel Salatin basic um, chicken tractor, that's what the base of this is. And there's lots of directions. Lots of people have information out there on how to build this. This is almost exactly the same. I've just shortened it to one foot tall instead of two foot tall, okay? And then we just built a very simple A-frame roof over this and uh, sheeted it with a solid covering. In this case, it's metal because that's gonna be more durable and is gonna hold up to the elements a lot better. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier in making it movable is that it needs to be light enough to move. And so any of these structures we're building with as lightweight materials as we can. That's why guys and a lot of people use the PVC because that's very light, very easy to move. That's great, it's just not gonna hold up well in my environment. I also have I've had a lot of wood in the barn, so I was able to mill this wood down. Um, this is all done with one by twos all the structure of it except for the base frame and the base of any of these needs to be out of a rot resistant wood so this is a pressure treated wood you could use cedar um, and and it is also lighter um, but it's also a softer wood it just doesn't take a beating as well and so i opted to go with the pressure treated for this and if you don't have your own wood um, building one by twos for the rest of the frame is absolutely great um, whatever style you're going to use and again I, I came up a foot high and then i just designed these to be at a 45 degree angle so all the cuts are really simple and you can see i can just walk in here um, with, without a lot of problems so you want that whatever style you go with whether it's an a-frame like this or a hooped one you just wanna make sure it's tall enough for you to get into. Um, you need to have good access and just a simple gate. You don't have to be a great carpenter. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see this is, is not perfect, but it keeps the chickens in and it allows anybody to get in and out very easily. So there's a couple different ways in moving these that people do it. You can create skids, and if you have very flat ground, you, you can do this without wheels, either by pulling it with a rope like this, which I'll demonstrate in a second, or um, with a dolly. Again, if you've ever seen in the, the Joel Salatin videos, they make it really easy. He's got a dolly in there that just lifts up the front end and it pulls. You just want good skids that are rounded off or shaped at an angle here so that they don't catch on things. Now, in my environment, none of the ground is flat. And um, so we need to do it a little bit different and we need some wheels. All right, so if you're gonna go wheeled because your ground is not flat enough and it's just not easy enough to pull or, or it's heavier because of this metal, this is also a little bit heavier, so I need a little bit of help. These are just some basic lawnmower wheels and they work great. Um, just bolted onto the side frame. Again, there's all kinds of plans out there. You just need to find what's right for you. Um, but the wheels do make it very helpful. They're just on the back. And so this is pretty easy to just come. I've got a rope on the front and this just pulls along. You can see this is gonna move real easily. Okay, so in talking about the roof, I know I mentioned a lot of guys use tarps. Tarps makes it really lightweight and that is great. Again, it's just not what worked best for me. I was willing to have a little extra weight uh, for the durability and low maintenance aspect. And so I went with a metal roof and in between would go with some of your plastic corrugated roof. That's not gonna hold up as long, but it's pretty durable and it's gonna be a lot lighter. Um, you just wanna make sure it's not clear because you do need protection from the sunlight. So you don't want clear panels on here. You want some good shade and some good protection from the wind and rain. Okay, so we've got a nice doorway that's real easy to get into. Next, you've gotta have food and water in here for them. There's a whole lot of ways to do this. We're really basic. We've just got a, a basic feeder here hanging from the inside and a water bucket with the different nipples on it. You need to make sure that you have enough nipples 
for the amount of chickens, one nipple per two to four chickens or so. And um, you can either set this on a block or you can also hang this if your structure will allow. And that will cover them for water. We've got to fill this up usually once every two days for a little while in the summer. We've got to fill this up once a day with 50 chickens in here. As you can see, this is a very simple structure. It just has the braces on the corners and a little bit of bracing to hold it rigid. And that's about it. If you were gonna put egg layers in here, you would certainly want to mount some uh, laying boxes in the back and a few more places to roost. Uh, this is for meat chickens. They spend most of their time on the ground and they're only in here for about six weeks or so um, mid-summer. So this meets all of their needs. If you're in a windy area, then you would want to cover two sides along the bottom to give them a little shelter from the wind. We're in a pretty protected little valley right here. We get very light breezes. The chickens don't come out here until it's warm, they're mature, and so for us, wind is not a problem. Okay, you guys, so whether you're raising five chickens or 50 to 100, whether you wanna create a chicken tractor that's gonna work for your egg layers or your meat chickens. We've covered the basics here. You know what you need to have a mobile coop to give them the shelter, the protection they need, the feed that they need, and you've got a few ins and outs. And so the next thing to do is really to just go search and find what's right for you and what's gonna meet your budget to get a chicken tractor and get those chickens out there on your property. Hope this has been helpful and I will see you soon.